Hey guys, today we are going to look at some foil card prices that are insane, given what their non-foil counterparts are. So foil cards have a pre premium, but sometimes that premium is a multiplier of over 10 times. It depends on how old the card is. And even to the point that the very old cards the amount of premium cards you will get per pack or how many packs you would need to get your first premium card was different. The ratio is different. Nowadays, when you get a foil card, it replaces a common card. But back then, if you had a foil uncommon, that would just replace one of the uncommons. So it was a lot harder to get foils or there was less more value associated with foils when that happened in the olden days. So a lot of times you will see when a card from, let's say the step, the non-foil is almost worthless. It's about 20 cents right now. And then the foil is around $4. So that's a multiplier of 20. Living end has a less multiplier. So it's kind of interesting to see what the multiplier of certain cards are. If you go all the way down to something like Barbarian Ring, that's a 40 cents card, but now it's $12 as a foil. It's kind of random, but at the same time, you if you're able to get foil older cards cheaply, probably worth the time to look them up, look up the prices. So actually the step is 16 cents, but the foil is $4.27. What I have found is whenever you can get foil lands, typically you should get those foil lands. The older the lands, the better. Now some lands are no good, but just because EDH is about style and flexibility, one of my friends has a deck that's completely not viable, but he likes it. And it's all about preference and people have different preferences. Now I will say, uh, selling foil cards is very difficult. Uh, I've had some interesting experiences uh, trading uh, because when you're dealing with someone who wants a foil, they are more likely to be, um, I guess, stringent on the conditioning. So when you're selling a Gideon Allied Zender card to someone, they probably just want it to play with. But when you're selling a foil, valuable foil, or a foil for their EDH commander uh, deck, they are going to want the best copy out there. So even little nicks, even little uh, damages to it can get the card sent back to you and there's nothing you can do at that point. Okay, so let's take a look at Temple Bell, which is from M2011. So some time ago, this is a good period of time to keep in mind, uh, M11 and older around that time block the foils I have seen have increased quite a bit in price. And normally when you have the average card price be 61 cents for a non-foil, the multiplier which gets this to $20 is insane, right? It's almost a 35 multiplier. It's pretty good. And this card continues to end foil. Be Just one of the better EDH cards, it does have an infinite combo in EDH where it's really easy to pull off especially if you are mono blue. So I believe it's mine over matter. So every time you discard, you can discard a card and then you can untap a permanent. And obviously you do this infinite amount of times and you mill out your opponents, all of your opponents in one go. So when you are looking for old foil cards, anything in the EDH, playable, slightly playable, buy it and see what the price is, especially in bulk. So I did want to talk about this card. The foil price is not dependent at all on the non-foil price. So the only thing that can take down a foil price is a reprint of a foil version of that card. So Barbarian Ring from Odyssey, Odyssey being one of my now favorite sets because of Predict and just the tons of Predicts I have. This card is not going up in price. It is just flatlining like crazy, or not even flatlining, it's a 45 degree downwards trend. And, but the foil has gone up in price a ton. It's $12.75 as a foil. So that is one of the, 
um, I guess misconceptions. People feel like if the card goes down, the foil will go down. In EDH, that's just not true because reprints uh, do not typically affect unless the reprint is in foil. Uh, now, you do have some interesting things to know about Odyssey. Odyssey being a very, very old set. Lands, lands, lands. If I had to pin lands and artifacts. Artifacts, I would go land first and then artifacts. Because just so many decks want a copy. And, I mean, this land is okay in my opinion. It's not fantastic, but it's good enough, right? So, uh, people were thinking about speculating on Astro Slide, and that would have been a okay speculation. I mean, it went from 20 cents to 27 cents, which as a percentage is not bad, but if you wanted to buy list it, you probably couldn't get more than 5 cents for it. But the foil copies are 850. And here's something that we should go over a little bit. Foils behave completely differently from non-foils. If they're not in standard in standard the foil price does mimic the non foil price so if the non foil goes up the foil will go up if the non foil goes down the foil will go down in standard but in modern masters or in modern in in legacy and vintage any of the older formats that you would want to get a card in you want it in foil and that brings me to some interesting cards in foil that we have I believe the Aldrazi are very good. Not the Emoko, not th those ones, but the uh, Thought Not Seer, Matter Reshaper, and the other one, Reality Smasher. If I were to guess, I would guess after they rotate out and take a hit, that their foils are not going to take a hit, and if anything, they will start trending up. Okay, so let me give you an interesting story about this one. Um, this card, we were at, I was at NYU, and we were at sometime, someplace in Midtown. I was with my floor mates. Uh, two of them played Magic, and we hit, were doing the Descension pre-release. And we were doing draft after the pre-release, right? It was Saturday. I feel like it was Saturday night. We went to pre-release, and then, which was Friday, and then we went, we went home, took a nap. My... They woke me up, they got me, woke me up, and we went to a draft. Maybe it was like next week or something, but we drafted, and I had opened this card and foil. I passed it, right? I don't know what I took. I cannot remember what I took, but I remember my friend saying, whoa, you passed that? That's a really powerful card. And I was like, ah, this is, no one's going to play this card. And again, this is before EDH took off. This was before EDH was invented. I just remembered that card, and now it is a $66 foil. It's very good. It's very, very good. Anytime you can have a, I call this a free quotation effect, meaning that you can play spells, and it actually gives your spells, especially cantrips, very powerful abilities. Now, when you talk about interesting foils, I do want to talk about this one. It is an uncommon from 10th edition. Sees some play, and the regular version is $3. For uncommon, that's not bad. That is not bad at all. You, if you didn't want to get the 10th edition one, there are many cheaper copies, I think, in Revise for under $0.50. Cents. So it's not the fact that this card is limited in it's how many times it's been reprinted. It's out there. I believe this is the only one with this particular artwork, and that's why it is $3. But the foil is $37. Wow, that is a huge multiplier, a more than 10x multiplier on this card, maybe a 12x multiplier. And when you come down to it and you really, really look at it, it's seeing some sideboard play against Affinity, but not that much. The, the problem with foils are... They are hit or miss and quite unpredictable. And when you talk about unpredictability, you talk about artwork. Maybe original artwork is more iconic. You talk about what were the foils before the foil replaced the common card. It used to be if you had a, even in Scourge, I remember, if you had a foil rare, 
you don't get another rare. Today, we can get a foil mythic, another mythic, and then a double-sided mythic, right? It's possible, not likely, but possible. All right, here's, here's one that I should have known. I should have known this one. And it kind of is mind-boggling that I don't own a foil copy of this, given just the amount I own a non-foil. All right, again, lands that have special abilities and foil that are old, take a look at them. And I see these in bulk all the time. I'm not, I don't see this type of card in bulk, but this particular card in bulk, because it is a $140 card. But I see foils of just random lands. Just like random kind of semi-useful lands. One day, they could be valuable. Now, this card is a rare from Saviors of Kamigawa. Not much of it was open. I believe this was the last of the Kamigawa, and they had the Celestial Kinrin. I opened so much of this for the Inferno Kinrin, the Celestial Kinrin. Um, I think my AOL, like I changed my AOL um, user handle when we're still using that to uh, Inferno Kinrin, because I just love the Kinrin, and I was like, oh, cool. And it turned out they had a bear company, and the bear is like, okay, it's not like amazing, but... I mean, if you're at a sushi restaurant, that's pretty much all they carry in New York City, at least. This is a home run, and I knew it. I knew it, but I did not go into the foils. And I could have, because I looked at them many times when they were very affordable. And I said, huh, this is going to be a really difficult land to reprint. And even back then, I was thinking of reprints, because remember, we had the core set, and the core sets did have some reprints in them. Not really good ones, but at the same time, you know, whatever. I looked at it and I said, I really love this card. I love it because it's something kind of unique. Maybe one day people want to return lands. Uh, one of the things I believed was going to happen, and it didn't actually happen to, well, I guess it did kind of happen, was that we would have, um, we, not that we would have ED8s, but we would have a format where everyone, will, every single card was a legendary card, right? So it wasn't EDH. EDH, you can play non-legendary cards, but in the format that I was thinking of, you would just play legendary cards and you could play four copies of them and they wouldn't have the legend rule. And that was a format I imagine would be made by now and it has not, right? And that's why I, A, I opened a ton of packs because the Radio Shack always had these on sale like all the time. And I wanted all the Kinrins, which I did. I think the green one was my favorite, Bountiful Kinrin. It was the worst of the bunch, but I mean, Cloud Kinrin, I think, Inferno, um, I miss Lesniel. Yeah, I'm missing one. But anyway, I love them. I thought the artwork was fantastic. You know, I, I just love the name. I named like all my user names and emails after the Kinrins. And that was it. Oh, actually, my. MTG Salvation, when I used to be a moderator, and I used to actually care about that, was Kinrin. K-I-R-I-N. That's it. And I used to be a very active member on it, and some drama happened, and I, I don't want to go over that. But that's I love them, and because I love them, I opened a ton of these packs, and this land was very common. No way. Like I knew it was good, but... I, I should have gone deep into foils. I knew it. Like I knew it, but I didn't I mean, whatever, right? Anyway, let me know if you have any of these in foil or if you have any other surprising foil prices. Bye, guys.